In this recording, I'm going to talk a little bit about your options as far as collisions and controlling where your player can and cannot go inside the Unreal Game Engine. To begin here, this overall project was the third person template. And what I've done is I'm just going to be working with the starter content today. Now, the first thing that I'm going to demo here is what are your options inside of Unreal regarding creating collision for 3D assets that you place in the scene? If I go ahead and test this level, just to show you here, some of the common or starter content here, you can see like the chair and the table, I can't actually move through. That means there's a collision on it. However, notice that I can run straight through the couch. We may not want that whenever we're working in a game environment. So the question is, is what can Unreal do to help us make sure that that doesn't happen? One thing that you can do is you can actually double click on an asset or element that you import into Unreal and it will set collisions for you directly in the game engine. So for instance here down at the bottom in my content browser I actually already have up the props for the starter content group and I'm going to go ahead and double click on the couch here. Whenever you import or whenever you're working with an asset you are able to come in here and look at all of the different assets uh, options here as far as what it is working with, also including level of detail, um, also pivots, normal, it's UV mapping, etc. The thing though that we are going to be focusing on specifically here is up on the menu bar here, there's a collisions drop down menu. You have a bunch of different types of collision options. You have some simplified collisions, and if you are starting out with Unreal, I would tell you just to stick to these. You also have the DOP collisions, which are discrete oriented poly types. And what those are, are those are still simplified collisions, but they deal with the K where K volume is your axis and plane alignments. These can give you a little bit more control as far as the overall layout of the collision. But for my game plan, I'm saying to myself, I actually don't need to worry about whether or not a player can actually sit on this couch. So I can actually just stick to a simplified box collision here. So if I click on this, it might be a little hard to see here, but hopefully you can see that now a green box has appeared around my object. And that's showing where the collision is concerned. And up in the corner here, as far as your information is concerned, you can actually see that number of collisions for primitives, I only have the one here. For starting out, this is fine. Once I save this, however, an important thing to note is every subsequent couch that I put into the game environment now is going to have this collision box around it. So let me go ahead and save and let's X out of this and let's come back into our scene again. So I'm going to hit play. So again, table, but now you see how I can't actually get through the couch here. But to reemphasize what I had just talked about, let's say I click and drag a second couch into the scene. And I'll go ahead and rotate that a little bit and kind of pull it down here. So now I have two couches in the scene where if I run over, notice I still can't interact with that one. But then again, I can't interact with this one. This can be both a pro and a con, though normally we do consider this a pro because of the fact that we only have to set the collision once for an object. Every subsequent object we place in the game environment will have the collision placed on it. Now the second item in this video I wanted to discuss is, great, so you have the collision set on your objects, but what if you don't want a user to go into a certain area? This is always a struggle as far as game design is concerned, where maybe you have to set up a mountainous area, but yet somehow you have that one player that figures out how to break through and fall through the world. This brings us over to the actors panel on the left hand side where you actually are going to want to go into volumes. There's a bunch of different volumes here that over time, you know, you will play with, but the big one is the blocking volume. Blocking volumes and volumes in general are present and visible to us within our working game environment. The moment you begin to test your game though, the user will not actually be able to see it. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is I'm gonna click and drag and drop a blocking volume. A blocking volume is just that. It is an invisible wall that the user cannot pass through. So what I'm actually going to do and what I frequently do is first off, I scale this down. I don't need a lot of depth depending on how I'm using this. And then I'm going to scale this super long 
And depending on the scene or the environment I'm working on, I'll also make it pretty tall here. For something like this, it's a little bit overkill because I don't have any mountains or landscape, but just to demo. One thing that I like to do when I'm working, and this is a personal preference, is because whenever I'm testing, I might be running all over creation trying to find where I placed my volume. What I'll often do is just grab a specific prop or asset and just use it as a placeholder, just so that if for testing purposes, when I play my game, I'll be able to see. So let's go ahead and test. So there's my rock. So now if I run here, you see how I cannot continue moving. This is probably one of the biggest benefits as far as the blocking volume is concerned. The goal is to not have your player fall through the world or fall off the world. Now, again, it's only so far as the blocking volume spans. For instance, if I run around the rock, you see that I can keep moving here. So this is a nice way because oftentimes what will happen is game players, they will try to jump around or find different ways to get to certain areas that uh, you may not actually want them getting to. So the blocking volume is very helpful. And then again, likewise, you don't want your players running through your assets in your game environment. So having that control in Unreal to be able to double click an asset and then set its own collision can be very helpful. 